In one of my last videos, I showed you how a lessee would account for a finance lease under ASC 842, which is U.S. GAAP. But in that example, I assumed that the lessee did not incur any initial direct costs. So what I want to do in this video is go through that same example, but this time I'm going to assume that the lessee did incur initial direct costs. And I want to show you how those initial direct costs would change the initial calculation of the right of use asset and how it would change the amortization in the journal entries throughout the lease. Okay, so let's get started. We've got a lease term again of three years. We've got the lessor's implicit rate of return, which is known to the lessee, of 8%. And then we've got an annual lease payment of $300,000 with lease payments being made at the start of each year. Now, we also have a guaranteed residual value and an expected residual value of $50,000. So from all this information, we can use the formula for the present value of an annuity due to calculate the present value of of those lease payments, which is $834,979. Now, you might be wondering, how is that relevant to the calculation of our initial right of use asset? Well, this is going to be the starting point. Okay, our initial lease liability is going to be the starting point in calculating the initial right of use asset. Now, in the previous video, I had it set up where the initial lease liability and the initial right of use asset were identical. Okay, but if these, if you have lease prepayments, if you have initial direct costs, if you have incentives being received uh, by the lessee from the lessor, those things can change the initial right of use asset and make it such that it's not the same amount as the initial lease liability. Okay, so we're gonna start with the initial lease liability, which we calculated, $834,979. We're gonna add any lease prepayments, which are zero in this example, and then we're going to add the lessee's initial direct cost. So in this example, I'm assuming there's $14,000 of initial direct costs incurred by the lessee upon commencement of the lease. So that's gonna increase the initial right of use asset. Now, you would also subtract any incentives from the lessor, uh, but in this case, uh, the lessee is not, I'm just assuming those are zero, so we don't have to worry about that. We're just gonna focus on initial direct costs, but again, here's the formula for calculating that initial right of use asset. So we're basically, in this example, uh, we're just gonna start with that lease liability, 834,979, and then we're gonna add to that the initial direct cost of 14,000. So you'll see that our initial right of use asset $848,979, which is the initial direct cost plus the initial lease liability. Okay, so let's get to our journal entry. By the way, the lease amortization schedule is gonna be the same. It's not gonna be changed at all because the lease amortization schedule is for our lease liability and calculating interest on that lease liability. So it's, it's gonna be identical to what you saw before. So I'm not gonna go through that. What I'm gonna do is get to the journal entries. Now, before that initial capitalization of the lease by the lessee, what we had was we debited the right of use asset and credited the lease liability for the same amount in that previous exam in that prior video. It was 834,979 debit, 834,979 credit. Now the right of use asset initially, so that initial right of use asset is higher, it's greater than the initial lease liability by $14,000 because of those initial direct costs incurred by the lessee. So we've got this debit of $848,979 and a credit of $834,979. So we need a credit to make the debits and credits balance. And what we have is a credit to cash because the lessee is incurring these initial direct costs. They're paying these at the start of the lease, okay? And so they've got cash going out the door. So we're gonna credit cash. Uh, now, I had a student ask me once with these initial direct costs, well, do you need to discount these for the time value of money? Do you need to do... No, you don't need to do any of that because it's being paid today at the start of the lease. So it's not some payment that's occurring in the future. Okay, so our right of use asset is higher for the lessee than the initial lease liability, okay, because these initial direct costs. But then to balance the journal entry, we have this credit to cash. The lessee paid 14000 in these initial direct costs, means it has a higher right of use asset, but also had some cash going out the door. Okay. Now I split, we're also going to have a journal entry for that first lease payment on that same day. You could have combined all of this into a single entry, but I separated it 
into into two entries so that it hopefully be a little easier for you to understand what's going on. But this debit to the lease liability and credit to cash is just what happens when the very first lease payment is made uh, and on the start of the lease. Now, what? So the initial right of use asset is going to be different because of the initial direct cost, but also the amortization expense. Okay, notice our interest expense, that's going to be the same. Like I said, the lease amortization table doesn't change. But the amortization expense is going to be different because the initial right of use asset is different. And we're amortizing this uh, right of use asset. Let me go back through here. So our annual amortization, we got a three-year lease term, and we had 848979 the initial right of use asset. So we take the initial right of use asset divided by the lease term, that gives us $282,993 of amortization expense for that right of use asset each year of the lease. Now remember, if this lease happened to have a transfer of ownership clause where it said the lessee would get titled to the property at the end of the lease, or if the lease had a bargain purchase option, in those cases, then the lessee would amortize this over the economic life of the asset and not the lease term. But we don't have that in this situation, so we're just gonna amortize this thing over the lease term. So the initial right of use asset divided by three because there's three periods in this lease. We have three years. So now we see our amortization expense recognized December 31st, 2024. So at the end of the first year of the lease, we debit amortization expense, we credit the right of use asset for 282,993. Now, at the end of year two of the lease, December 31st, 2025, we again make the same journal entry, debit amortization expense, credit right of use asset for 282,993. And then December 31st, 2026, tried to squeeze it in here. Uh, the end of year three, we again make the same journal entry because we're amortizing this right of use asset straight line over the lease term. Now notice, this amortization expense of 282,993 is higher than in the video we did before because the initial direct costs increased our initial right of use asset. Okay, so basically we're amortizing 848,979 instead of 834,979 because the, the initial direct costs increased the initial right of use asset and thus increased the amount of amortization expense that's going to be recorded.